Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, September 24th, 2020, and today I'm going to be talking about absentee voters in the 2020 election. So thanks to the New York Times, they are tracking absentee ballots requested and the ones sent automatically. So 44 million ballots have been sent automatically in 10 states, including um, 10 states and the District of Columbia. 21.5 million ballots have been requested in an additional 22 states. So with 10% of the the overall absentee uh, of the overall electorate requesting a ballot and then an additional 21 percent getting it sent home uh, it seems as if this election is shaping up to be one of the biggest mail-in voter elections in history if not the biggest in 2016 one in four votes were cast by mail slash absence slash absentee there is no difference there is not a single difference between absentee voting and vote by mail they are the exact same thing there are 207 million registered voters. A lot of people didn't vote in 2016. A lot of people, um, the Democratic Party, I think, uh, well, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote back in 2016, but it wasn't as if she had carried um, an overall majority of voters that are registered. No candidate really comes close to that. But at the same time, the Democratic Party is going to be ramping up every effort to get out all of those voters who didn't vote in 2016, may not have even voted for Barack Obama to vote in this election. So on your screen, you're looking at the absentee ballots requested so far. So these are the um, states that all have requests for absentee ballots compared to their 2016 requests. So based off a number, you would see that population-wise, obviously, um, bigger states are at the top. But in terms of a, of a percentage from 2016, we're seeing dramatic increases in terms of uh, ballots being requested. Because people are afraid of COVID-19, people are likely to request their ballots in levels that we have have never seen before in 2016 the number in pennsylvania was uh you know at this point we were probably seeing maybe a quarter of a million less than that probably um a tenth of a million votes um in this general and a tenth of a million uh a tenth of a hundred thousand i mean we're not looking at too many absentee ballots cast uh or requested in pennsylvania in 2016 and now we're seeing a, a 100 uh 1861 percent increase from 2016 i'm misreading my numbers here um and then in Florida, 146% increase from uh, or 146%, including 2016. So we're seeing dramatic increases in terms of the absentee ballots requested in each of these states. Illinois, uh, Illinois, I don't know why I said Illinois, 426%. Ohio, 136%. Georgia, 526%. Wisconsin, 636%. So what we're seeing is um, a lot larger magnitudes than what we normally expect for absentee ballots. And that's expected. I mean, COVID-19 is a very real threat. People are afraid of catching um, a deadly, deadly disease, um, deadly virus at the polling booth. So looking at these requests, it makes sense. But I think that there is a lot to unpack with absentee ballots, because when we're looking at the battleground states, the Democratic Party is leading in terms of absentee ballots. What we're likely to see on election night is that Donald Trump leads in a lot of the key battleground states. Why? Well, some states have rules where they're not able to count their ballots ahead of time, or they may have rules where, um, you know, the in-person voting will have to have uh, have to be counted first or they can't report results um, until right after poll closing time. So what we might see is uh, Donald Trump leading by a pretty substantial margin on election night. That's something that uh, the Democratic Party will have to come to terms with, that Donald Trump will look as if he is winning on election night. And it is very possible that as the ballots are counted and as more votes are sent in, um, we will see uh, Joe Biden prevail. And what we were likely to see is what um, Bloomberg likes to call the red mirage. Essentially, it's just a red map that we would normally say if this was the map on election night at 12 a.m., 1 a.m., we would say the election's called easily a Republican victory. But there's going to be so many votes that are going to be um, cast that are by mail that are going to take a while to count. And while some states have committed to counting 99 percent of their mail-in ballots before Election Day, there are going to be very close states. And that's not every single state that is committed to doing so. So when we look at these absentee ballots requested, it's very good for the Democratic Party that they are getting a lot of their absentee ballots out. But let's say the issue of uh, voter fraud comes up with the Trump administration. Let's say they try to bring it to the Supreme Court and they have a 6-3 majority. There's a very real possibility that Donald Trump does try to delegitimize the election results if he loses, if he takes uh, the election results and says, I don't like them, I'm not winning my re-election bid, let's go to the Supreme Court and try to cut off voting by mail ballots being counted on the issue of voter fraud. And that's something that could very much happen with the Trump administration. It's not out of question. Um, 
you know, when he talked about how he'd possibly even consider not having a peaceful transition of power. No president in history has ever said that. This isn't a partisan statement. It's just reporting on what he said, and that's not going to be a good look with the American voters whatsoever. And looking at these voting by mail ballots, there are certain states where you still can't even vote without an excuse besides COVID-19. Besides COVID-19. That includes a notable state of Texas, 38 electoral votes, that it looks as if, uh, you know, the Democratic Party is doing phenomenal in Texas. They're only down one, two percentage points in this state, um, and it's 38 electoral votes. It will be crucial to Trump's reelection, but it is not crucial to Biden's victory path. But if uh, Texas is gone, you can guarantee a number of other swing states are gone as well. But the fact that uh, COVID-19 is not a valid excuse to vote by mail really just goes to show that this is a very partisan effort to keep the state Republican. Because, you know, looking at who truly sees COVID-19 as a threat uh, versus not, typically based off the polling numbers at least, the Democratic Party takes COVID-19 much more seriously, which means Republicans will be more likely to vote in person, whereas an uh, you know elderly Democrat may say, I'm not going to risk my life by voting. And there are millions of those voters across this country, thus the reason why uh, roughly uh, Mitt Romney's 2012 um, voting numbers those that amount of numbers have uh, voters have requested an absentee ballot or have had one sent to them automatically. So we're going to see a very large percent of the population being um, by mail this election. So Democrats have actually requested more absentee ballots. This is the share of requests by party affiliation in some key battleground states. Some states have still not yet sent out uh, absentee ballots. So counting can be off in some of these uh, states and not every single state has published data already. But in Pennsylvania, 70 percent of Democrats have uh, requested an absentee ballot. Now, looking at the idea of naked ballots, what does that mean? Essentially, there are ballots that have been sent in in the past that have previously been counted that will not be counted in the general election where voters were able to cast a ballot. Sure. But they didn't put it in the secrecy envelope, which means that it could have been tampered with. There could have been altering on the ballot, which essentially means that the vote is invalidated. It will not be counted in the 2020 election. And what we see is that Pennsylvania is the most lopsided Democrat to Republican registration um, absentee ballot request state. And this state went to Donald Trump by 44,000 votes in 2016. It was 0.72 percent, uh, 0.73 percent. And if we're talking about um, Donald Trump's numbers in these states, he's not doing too well. He's doing the best out of all the three Rust Belt states. So uh, he's not doing too well. I'm not going to say that he's the favorite to win or probably won't come too close. But let's say the Democratic Party does see 100,000, 200,000 votes um, thrown out just because these voters don't necessarily know how to use the secrecy ballot or send it in without using it. Uh, and that could likely end up with a defeat in Pennsylvania, if that's the case. So education on top of these absentee ballots is something the Democratic Party is really going to have to work for. The Republican Party, not so much considering that only 30 percent of the requested ballots are by Republican voters, usually indicating that the rest will be voting in person. In Maine, very lopsided margin as well. In Iowa, another lopsided margin, North Carolina and Florida. So the Democrats are running up the numbers in the key battleground states. But at the same time, education is going to be a very important issue. And also, uh, there's the issue of the mail backing up and whether or not these ballots will be counted on time, which could raise questions about the legitimacy of the election, most notably by President Trump. So if we look at some of these other battleground states, not every single state does have information at this point. Um, Five percent of absentee ballots were uh, sent in 2016. Now, 33 percent of active voters have requested an absentee ballot. So in these battleground states, we're seeing a very large share of absentee voters uh, or, or voters requesting absentee ballots. Ohio, 22 percent, one in five voters. That's an eight percent increase from 2016. Looking in North Carolina, it's a 13, uh, sorry, 11 percent increase, three percent up to 14 percent, 49 to 18 uh, Democrat split. In New Mexico, one in five voters have requested an absentee ballot. New Hampshire, only four percent. It looks as if there's going to be a pretty high turnout. 75 percent was the mark set in 2016. It's likely to be higher, but it looks like it won't be by mail. Like I said, some of these states may not have um, data published for us to see, but in Minnesota, you know, roughly three in 10 voters have requested an absentee ballot and will likely be voting by mail, 22% for reference in 2016. Uh, Michigan has doubled from 15% to 31%. Um, my home state of Maryland from 5% up to 21%. Uh, very high turnout here as well. Uh, like I said, in Maine, increased uh, percent of voters requesting ballots. In Iowa, 55% Democrats. 28% Republicans. So this is not to say that the Democratic Party is likely to win the election based off requesting ballot numbers. No, that's not really what I'm trying to take away from here. I'm just trying to tell everyone that essentially 
it is possible that Donald Trump does look like he's going to win on election night, but what we're seeing is very high numbers in terms of the Democratic Party's um, request for absentee ballots. So it's possible while the Rust Belt may look red on election night, it goes blue after absentee ballots are cast. Um, it is very possible that Florida looks red on election night, but ends up going blue after the ballots are cast, or Arizona, or New Mexico, or Colorado, or Nevada, or Virginia. This is a very real scenario, and it isn't too likely that we will get the entire picture on election night. So what we're seeing is that the Democratic Party is running up the numbers in terms of requesting absentee ballots, which means that a lot of the vote that comes in on election night, if the ballots aren't pre-counted before the election or the results are released after the in-person ballots are counted, it is very possible, if not uh, inevitable, that Donald Trump leads on election night until these Democratic votes start to pour in. Because the Democratic Party, while they may be doing well in terms of requesting absentee ballots, you also have to realize that education comes uh, and they run the risk of voters not knowing how to officially submit an absentee ballot, which would in turn lose the Democratic Party votes nationwide. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.